This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and today we're going to look at something kind of different for us. I mean, we do a lot of laptops, but this one is what HP calls a mobile workstation. This is the HP ZBook 15. Lots of horsepower inside, Series 3D dedicated graphics for you CAD professionals especially. We're going to look at it now. So here we have the HP ZBook 15. This is available as a 14, 15, or 17 inch size. I think the 15 inch is the most interesting because you get most of the oomph and horsepower and graphics that you can possibly get out of this series without having to go to the 17 inch so you don't need something that big or you're going to be using an external monitor a lot of the time. And the 14 inch is a little bit lesser on performance, but we'll talk about those configurations later. 15.6 inch display. This one has what HP calls their dream colored display. It is, well, look at that right there. My God, the colors. Great contrast, nice, nice saturation. I haven't seen anything that looks this good since the Sony Vio Z long ago, far away. Almost 100% Adobe RGB coverage. It's got 99% according to our Spider 4 Pro colorimeter and 100% of sRGB coverage as well. So for those of you who are working professionally with graphics of any kind and need really wide color gamut in your built-in mobile workstation display, this would be a really nice display. It's a kind of anti-glare display. I, it doesn't have, you know, a matte screen protector on it that looks ugly or anything like that, but it, there is some glare as well. I'm getting it. If we move it a little bit, see, you'll see a little popping up, but this is not a glossy display. It's also not a touchscreen display. Given that this is a mobile workstation, it is 6.2 pounds. So this is no ultrabook by any means. But this is for those of you who really need a lot of oomph, something desktop-like in a portable product. And to that end, this guy has a quad-core fourth-generation Intel Haswell CPUs, the Core i7-4800MQ. That's clocked at 2.7 gigahertz. That's the basic clock speed. And of course, it has Turbo Boost to go even higher. We have two RAM slots in here. This one happens to be configured with 16 gigs of DDR3 RAM. There are two RAM slots inside. So right now, 8 gig sticks are about where you're going to find commonly. So that would bring it up to the 16 gigs that it has. Two and a half inch SATA drive bay, easy access. I'll show you the internals later. The whole thing is really easy to upgrade. Again, this is not one of those sealed up ultra books. And it also has a variety of mini bays inside, PCIe kind of bays for your wireless card. And it's available with either the Intel 7260 Wi-Fi Edit 11AC card or the kind of more retro Centrino Advanced N6235 dual band 802.11N adapter. Both of those have Bluetooth in conjunction with the Wi-Fi on them. All models have an optical drive bay and that is right here on the side of the machine. And you can get it with either a DVD burner or a Blu-ray drive. That one is up to you. Plenty of ports on here because this is a big guy. And while we're looking at it, here's our SD card slide. It's got a little blank in here to fill in the hole. And you can see it's a full depth slot, so a card will not stick out. If you're carrying a card around in there, there's our headphone mic jack. We have two USB 3.0 ports. One of them is right here. Good old legacy VGA. On the front, we just have LED indicators, all that sort of thing. And on this side, we have our express card slot. That's kind of a legacy thing there. I don't know how many people are actually using those anymore. Smart card reader for security. Another USB 3.0 high-speed port. Full-size display port. A Thunderbolt port. You don't see that too, too often on PCs. Obviously, our ventilation right here, a fan. USB 2.0 port right there for older peripherals that don't behave well on USB 3.0. Lock slot right there. And on the back, that's where the power plugs in right there. And this comes with a large, large power brick. So the good news is it's got enough juice in the power brick to actually power this running at full throttle with a full CPU and the dedicated graphics running at the same time. The bad news is it is big and heavy. And gigabit ethernet right here. So those are the ports on our guy. If we close it up, this is what the lid looks like. Mil spec 810G, so it's rugged enough. Spill resistant keyboard, this is actually metal over here. Nice rubberized finish around the edges makes it easier to grip, which is always a good thing. Usually Hewlett Packard logo and that kind of cut an angle looking back. Beefy hinges on it. And on the bottom we have an eight cell removable battery here. 83 watt hour battery. Kind of need that because there's a lot of horsepower in here. Between that quad core CPU and the NVIDIA Quadro dedicated graphics, 
you need some power there. Legacy docking port right here. This is the battery release, and this one here releases the bottom cover, and we'll do that right now. This is, sleep. This is also metal. So here we have two RAM slots. We have our Wi-Fi card. We have an available slot right here. This is a little flashing 32 gig SSD drive to speed up the operation of the hard drive. And the hard drive is a two and a half inch SATA drive. You can see lift lever, real easy to get to if you want to upgrade the hard drive. So nice thing about one of these kind of workstation bigger machines, they are designed to be upgraded. Easy access to internals. No opening up 19 obscure to torque screws and worrying about voiding your warranty. No problem right here. Obvious ventilation going on right here. We can see one of the fans is exposed. This is a machine where you will hear the fan. If you're making it work reasonably hard, not even really hard, you'll hear it. But large fans, large, larger chassis, relatively speaking, means that it's not one of those high-pitched, whiny, it sounds like it's going to take off and fly across the room kind of things at all. But it's a, it's a presence. You'll hear the fan. Now the ZBook 15 starts around $2,000, $2,100 or so. You can go down to a Core i5 if you want to, for example. It depends which of the NVIDIA Quadro graphics options you go for, and I'll go through those in a minute. The machine that we have here with the Dream Color Full HD display on it, the internals that you saw, we have a nice, fast 7200 RPM hard drive inside the little caching drive, Wi-Fi AC. This one sells for $2,799, so this is not a cheap machine. We also have the top of the line Quadro and video graphics option here. It's the K2100M with two gigs of DDR5 RAM for video. For those of you who want to save some money, there is the K610 with one gig of dedicated memory or two gigs of dedicated memory or the K1100M. So again, top of the line graphics. Notice this is Quadro. This is not one of the gaming video cards. So this is really ge geared toward those of you who are doing content creation, be it CAD work, video editing, that sort of thing. Now you can still play games on this. You'll get some pretty nice Battlefield 4 performance, for example, but really it is for those of you who are doing mobile graphics kind of development work. And taking a look at the keyboard, which is a nice thing that we get a actual number pad and even neater, something you don't always see on a big chassis machine is the display goes all the way flat back. I'm not sure how often you're going to be using it that way, but there it is. So nice backlit keyboard here. We got our number pad right here using the FN key to activate the multimedia keys by default. And notice HP has been chasing after Lenovo and doing the eraser stick pointer thing. So we have that there if you wish to use it as well. And below the keyboard, which has pretty nice travel, damped key sound. That's nice. We have the trackpad here, buttons top and bottom in case you are using the eraser stick pointer, three button trackpad. Really nice soft click. It, it, they're not hard to press. They don't fight back, but they're not so easy to press that you hit them by accident all the time. Now you can get this with Windows 7 Pro or Windows 8 Pro. Windows 7, which is what this one shipped with, not the greatest support for multi-touch gestures here. So Synaptics trackpad seems to behave pretty well. Really can't tell you about how the Windows 8 gestures would be, but generally Synaptics is pretty good. And while we're looking at this, notice there is also a fingerprint scanner. We have a trusted platform module inside as well, so we have that for security. So it's got all the business features on it as well. A couple of other nice touches are we've got a mute button right above the keyboard here, also backlit and wireless on off. So no hunting for FN combo numbers to actually turn those things on and off. 15 inch laptops have room for bigger speakers. And besides this has DTS Studio Sound Audio. So for those of you who are video producers and want something akin to decent sound, this has pretty good sound in terms of volume and also in fullness. And we'll play a video so you can hear that in a minute. In terms of performance, again, we got the quad core i7 in here. We have our NVIDIA Quadro Graphics K2100M. And on PC Mark 7, it scored 5471. Now, PC Mark 7 can be a little bit misleading because it looks at the storage subsystem and gives that a lot of weight. So anything that has an SSD drive is going to score a lot faster than something that has a conventional spinning hard drive. So don't put too much weight on that. W Prime that computes Pi. Now there's a real indicator of the horsepower of the CPU here. 7.94 seconds. Whereas typically we see something like 22 seconds for a core i5 dual core ultrabook. So obviously a lot more computational power. Anything that's computationally involved here will complete in much, much quicker time than it would on a core i5 ultrabook or even a core i7 ultrabook. For 3D Mark 11, it's scored in 
performance test, 2704. I expected a bit higher from the Quadro. I was a little bit surprised by that, but I think that test may be a little bit more optimized towards the graphics cards that are designed for gaming. And lastly, Geekbench 3, another one that really lets you know how your CPU is doing. 3623 for the single core test, 13,004 for the multi core test. Now, for those of you who say, well, that's awful nice, but this is too big for me. If you're interested in the ZBook 14, you can get that with, like, say, a quad core i5. And for graphics, there, you're looking at AMD Fire Pro graphics, not quite the same oomph as you're getting with this Quadro machine. For those of you who want something bigger, a 17 inch machine, well, you can do that and you can get up to the Quadro K3100M with 4 gigs of DDR5 video RAM on board. And obviously, well, bigger everything there, but you're still looking at the same selection of Core i7 CPUs. It's not going to get any faster currently than what we have in this guy. So again, the 15-inch kind of has a nice balance there of performance, but for those of you who do need a little bit more graphical oomph, well, 17 inches available for you. So how about battery? Well, first of all, again, it is refreshing that you can actually remove this battery, so should you really need a lot of staying power on the road, you can get spare batteries and extended battery even for this machine. It's, it's a machine with a fast CPU and dedicated graphics on board, so no, this is not going to be your 10-hour Energizer Bunny. That said, that is a very high-capacity battery right there, and power management for the, the fourth-generation Haswell is quite good. And using the NVIDIA control panel and having it decide whether to use the CPU or GPU for various tasks, it still manages, you know, it depends on what you're doing. If you're doing lightweight work, say you're just working in Word, doing some database development, that sort of thing, you should certainly be able to get at least four hours out of this, maybe even four and a half or so. Now, if you are doing CAD work on this, if you're playing serious 3D games, you're playing with Laura Croft, for example, having a little fun there, really plug it in. I mean, yes, you can you can probably get two hours or so, maybe even two and a half while doing that sort of thing, but you're going to get maximum performance out of the CPU and the GPU when it's plugged in anyway, and machines like this, well... The fact that you can get two hours of gaming in on the road unplugged actually is pretty impressive. So let's see how video looks and the sound as well from the speakers. Right now we're at about two-thirds volume. Some of you have been waiting for it. This is our full Surface Pro 3 review, the in-depth one, the hands-on one. We've spent several days with this. More so that's pretty good, right? I, I have to say that that sounds an awful lot like me, which is a refreshing thing instead of the usual tinny, hissy speakers that we hear on laptops. So not bad in the multimedia department by any means, which we would expect. Honestly, for this much money, we ought to get, well, decent set of speakers, very good performance. All those things are here. So who is this for? This is for anybody who needs the power of a desktop and something you can pick up and carry around. 6.2 pounds, not super duper light, but really not, not terribly heavy either. And I particularly, again, like the 15-inch size because it does maintain some portability. There is the 17-inch size as well. But when you've got something like this and you compare it to, say, I know a lot of people who need some architectural work performance, CAD, all that sort of thing, end up getting a gaming laptop, something like a big Alienware. And really, maybe this would be more the machine for you. In fact, that's the idea. You need a really good keyboard. You need the backlighting on the keyboard. You need a responsive trackpad. You need the horsepower and performance that are here, and a graphics card that really does cater towards that kind of content creation. So for those of you who are doing the back-to-school thing, maybe you're going in for engineering, or particularly for graduate school engineering or design, CAD work, that sort of thing, uh, this machine also targets you folks there who really will find that your average Ultrabook isn't up to snuff when you have to do serious CAD designs with lots of components and that sort of thing. So that's the HP ZBook 15. It's available now. As I mentioned, you can get it in a 14 and a 17 inch size should your needs be different, your budget, that sort of thing. But anyway, very strong mobile workstation here. Excellent build quality, easy to upgrade. Not bad. Of course, it comes at a price. This is not a cheap product. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to visit our website for the full review and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.